Okay, well, the British media at this point was ecstatic because Harry seemed happier than he'd ever been, like for years. Um, he, he, people felt sorry for him because it seemed like, you know, next to William and Catherine's happiness, it was sad that Harry seemed to have no one. People loved this storyline. They also loved that she was an American, that she was different, that she had her own interesting background. I mean, up until a point until people started investigating that background. But at first, it just seemed like she just seemed new, exciting, and different. And it's kind of like when there's a new kid in the classroom. Everybody wants to get the new kid's attention, you know? And when you're the new kid, it's all exciting. Well, everybody at first was really excited about Megan. The, they called her the feminist princess of our dreams. Buckingham Palace's website agreed. Megan was proud to be a woman and a feminist. And the media instantly launched a hunt to find the truth about this little known actress because well they were really excited about her you can only be you know you can only say the same excited statements for so long then we got to get a little bit more about her let's keep the news cycle going let's find out more about where Meghan Markle came from and the first reports were very positive school teachers and old friends were more than happy to link themselves to Meghan's success they said that she was awesome and that she always has but had been you know they sang her praises and Reitman's I mean, they were thrilled to speak happily and openly about Megan because even though she'd been a complete and total nightmare, what are they gonna, you know, slap away a potential princess? Yes, please, let's talk about how we were linked to her once. The news coincided with the launch of Megan's collection with Megan's saying, Reitman's, really? You know, over and over and over on the TV and then, oh, she's also with Prince Harry. Reitman's was more than happy to support Megan. But one day later, the tone changed because as people began to find out more and more about Megan, people's antenna went up. Journalists called at her father's shabby Hollywood apartment. Standing at the open door, a pregnant woman explained that he was traveling in Mexico. I don't know who this pregnant woman was. She's just like staying at his place. Thomas Markle is a question mark, I have to say. She told the media that there was no way of contacting him and that she never knew when he was going to come back. Well, this delighted Megan. I mean, thank God that her dad is somewhere where people can't find him. He's such a weirdo anyway. And she telephoned Thomas Markle and told him, lay low, do not do not come out of hiding. This is a happy time for me. So just, they're looking for you. Just don't say anything. Just gonna rep this for me. Doria was under siege um, and Megan ordered Doria not to speak a word allegedly there were some journalists who offered doria money for an interview and they tried to enter her home illegally and they harassed her um when she was walking out on the sidewalk but she didn't say anything and later they put some guards out in front of her house because she was being pestered so much i remember harry saying things sort of similarly and in this tenor and i remember thinking yeah right now some of the things that harry said i was like i mean he went overboard he said that there were people following her on her job as a hospice nurse you know looking in the windows of her hospice patients and all of the climbing over the walls of the homes of her hospice patients i mean like i and i remember at the time being like oh please because he had that dumb line about how the last sound some of these patients heard was the click of a camera. Just like mommy. And I didn't have any patience for that. Well, the other thing that the newspapers were hammering on and on and on about was the fact that bankruptcy seemed to be a family trait. Everybody in the family was bankrupt. Thomas was bankrupt. Doria was bankrupt. Tom Jr. was bankrupt. Blah, 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 blah. This was humiliating for the family. But worse still was the fact that Megan did not reach out to them and say anything to them about what to expect or maybe even apologize to them for the fact that this was happening. Not that she could have done anything about it because it's not her fault if journalists want to start digging. But maybe if she had just extended some sympathy to them for the plight that they were in. Because the thing is, is that she can, she's famous enough that she can go in and hire somebody to rearrange her story online. She, she's she got Sunshine Sachs doing her bidding, rewriting the narrative in case people want to Google her. But Thomas Markle, Doria, Tom Jr., 
Samantha Markle, they don't have the resources, neither do they have the public profile to go in and change anything. What is, is. They can't hide the fact that they were bankrupt. They can't hide the fact that, you know, there might be negative stories about them or that they have, you know, maybe gotten into some trouble, you know, at some point in their past. And yes, of course, this is the price you pay when you make foolish decisions, but it's not the price anyone expects to pay. You know, nobody expects that their worst mistakes are gonna be splashed all over the newspapers because you have a relative who's gotten in with some famous people. And I think that for Megan not to at least extend a phone call and say, oh, this is so rough. I'm so sorry this is happening. You know, is there anything I can do? You know, and genuinely mean it, but she didn't. And so that, that ignoring her family's pain and embarrassment made some of the family members, Samantha in particular, go on the defensive. Now, Samantha Markle was ferocious when it came to the media. She was not here to play games and to stand up for Megan's, you know, or or to rewrite a narrative uh, to, to fit Megan's new station in life. Now later, Samantha would go out and say that she had been misquoted early on. I think that probably she was not. I think that she, I mean, what do we think about this behavior from Samantha? Well, let's read about it first and let's talk. Well, Samantha criticized Megan for her lack of emotional and financial support towards their father since she had become a famous actor. And she told Harry, watch out. The royal family would be appalled by what Megan's done to her own family. The truth would kill her relationship with Prince Harry. He wouldn't want to date her anymore because it puts her in a bad public light. And then, you know, she said that Megan was a pushy social climber. She said she was a social climber with a soft spot for gingers. And in The Sun, Samantha proclaimed that her behavior is certainly not befitting of a royal family member. Megan, she said, is narcissistic and selfish and that they had not seen each other since graduation in 2008. So it had been eight years since Samantha had seen Megan, but she had a whole lot to say about it. Now, what do we think about this? Samantha is certainly entitled to her idea of how things have gone. I mean, it's been her experience that Megan has treated her very poorly. It would be one thing to try to contact your sister. And if you're hurting, contact her and just say, you know, I think maybe you should reach out to dad. He's embarrassed that these stories are coming out or whatever you want to say. But maybe personal relationship should come before you're running to the media saying things. And then two, it's like all of the things might be true. But if you have tried to contact Harry first, like if you're really, really, really worried about the royal family, it would stand to reason that they would have people in place to sort of sift through some of these grifters that, you know, attach themselves to the family. I think I would be inclined if I were Samantha to just let the process play out and not feel like I needed to come into the media and look bitter. Because I think that Truth, though she may be speaking, I don't know that it's always flattered her to come out and say it. Megan is the sort of person who might be able to play for people for a little while, but eventually she's her own worst enemy. And she's going to come out and do and say things that are going to ruin it for her. So there isn't any reason to sully your own good name in an effort to sully someone else's. Their foolishness will hang them, you know? Megan, Megan will be her own demise. Megan didn't need any help from Samantha to articulate her problems, but I don't know. I think that Samantha's had a hard life. I think that she has watched her sister get everything that she could have possibly wanted, even down to her, her health. I mean, Samantha's had bad health issues. And, and so I think that it was a combination of concern that Harry know the truth and jealousy that Megan had somehow managed to bed down with the elites of society and she was still stuck in a wheelchair bankrupt, you know? I'm not saying that the things she said weren't true. They probably were. She said a lot of things that are very interesting, but I just wish that she hadn't said them just for her own sake. Because all, all we have is our own reputation. We can't worry about other people's reputation. We have to just, uh, just concern ourselves with our own. Also, at first, Tom Jr. contradicted Samantha. He said Megan didn't turn her back on everybody in the family. She worked very hard to get where she's at. But 
Eventually, his attitude altered and he joined on the attack. Megan telephoned her father and told him that she, he had better get his older two kids in line and they needed to stop attacking her. And Thomas Markle said, I can't. I mean, they're my children too. This is the experience that they've had. They're entitled to speak, just like you're, you would be entitled to speak if somebody interviewed you. So, unfortunately, this is the bed you've made. You have to lie in it. The family war headlines did not make anything better for Megan. The digital headlines were lured. I mean, it was all about how Megan was a gold digger. It was all about the fact that she had photoshopped things at Reitman's to make sure she looked as though she had a smaller waist, bigger breasts. She had had her face um, worked on. She had had, there, there were these ugh, super embarrassing clips on Pornhub, um, a, a scene from her in suits. Suspicious videos of her topless on a yacht. And there was this fabricated topless photo. It wasn't her, but still, it was her face. And so that's, that's embarrassing. So there was a lot of negative stories about her. Now, in Spare, he says that the thing that shocked him was how everybody came out of the gate screaming, we hate her, we hate her, we hate her, because she is biracial. That is not what Tom Bauer explains here. He does agree that the coverage of her was by and large quite negative uh, because her background was just sort of dimly lit. It was questionable. There was a lots of just sort of grimy details about what she'd been up to and how she had climbed up the ladder as far as she had. Um, and so, Tom Bauer does not say that there was, you know, all the press coverage was glowing. It was very, it was very questioning of her right to be next to Harry, essentially. And so Harry's definition of it as being super racist and super unkind, it was unkind, but it wasn't necessarily racist. Um, and it was just embarrassing. I mean, ultimately, that's what it was. It was just a lots of embarrassing stories that you would hope wouldn't be what people were saying when you finally found your way next to Prince Harry. People just couldn't get over who Harry had decided to align himself with so, so seriously. Uh, they just couldn't get over the fact that Harry was marrying somebody without a titled father, somebody that nobody had ever really heard of. Some, you know, just some 35 year old nobody from California who'd happened to have a couple of acting gigs and dressed up in some clothes for Reitman's. It just, it just sparked lurid reporting. It was, it was just a sort of story that made for lots of titillating stories, lots of juicy gossip. Um, the fact that she had been in suits and had been, you know, romping around with the men on suits, lots of ink was wasted describing the sex scenes from suits, speculating about her divorce, questioning her past. The men in her life were, you know, descended upon by the media they remained totally silent. They had nothing to say. And faced with this lack of cooperation, um, since a lot of people wouldn't talk uh, about Megan, especially her old boyfriends, this prompted people to rake over any social media posts that she'd ever made, trying to fill in the blanks where they couldn't get people to fill in the blanks for them. Um, all the stories about Michael Delzato came back up, the ice hockey guy. I remember in Spare, Harry being particularly worried about that story. And I remember how he talks about how he went to her and asked her, what is this all about? Who are these boyfriends? Remember how Harry, how obsessed Harry was with all this coverage and how he needed to keep going back to her over and over and over. What, what's this one about? What, what, why were you really with Rory? Why were you with Michael? What's going on? Are you, were you cheating? You know, all this. Well, what is Megan gonna say? Yeah, I was cheating on my boyfriends. I was just trying to climb up the ladder, you know. Wasn't having a great time with Corey or Trevor, so I was, you know, just selling my wild oats. What is she really gonna say? Of course she's gonna say no. Um, you know, there was just lots of people who were giddy over the fact that Megan was finding herself in some hot water. People from her past, maybe weren't coming out and speaking publicly, but they were speaking together about Megan being essentially exposed. When Megan met, met Harry, said one anonymous man, I, I messaged Trevor and said, he got your leftovers. Hollywood though, it, uh, 
by and large just stayed silent. Few had even heard of Megan anyway, and those who had rejected her after auditions refused to speak. All agreed that this was not the right time to make a new enemy. The exception were, the, were some of the cast of Suits. They loudly sang her praises. So most of Hollywood wasn't about to out her, but why would they? They're all over there trying to climb up the, the pole themselves. So they're not going to shoot down somebody that they maybe can, you know, get some ties with and maybe they'll get invited to that royal wedding. We know that there were indeed some, some Hollywood actors who reached out to Megan later on who never would have spoken to her before, but now that she's got some tie to the royal family, they are looking to get an in with her, you know? So what are they, they're not going to start attacking her now, even if they had heard of her, even if they had been annoyed by her. Hollywood isn't the place to go if you're looking for some negative soundbite. They're all trying to protect themselves and, and their futures. Now, in this fervored atmosphere, there was that one article that came out that did raise eyebrows and did seem, I mean, it did have overtones that were derogatory, racially derogatory. Um, Mail Online, which again was not a British publication, it was an American publication, comes out and says, Harry's girl is almost straight out of Compton. Gang scarred home of her mother revealed. So will he be dropping by for tea? And then the article wove together various racial stereotypes, lamenting Doria's gang scar Los Angeles neighborhood, Crenshaw, and its tatty one-story homes and listed some crime statistics for the area. So, I mean, that was just like a super tacky story. But again, what were you gonna expect from Mail Online? I mean, it was Mail Online. What are they gonna like sit down and write some award-winning piece of journalism? Hardly. Now, after a week of this, just bang, 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 all day long, all night long, you know, it's all anybody was writing about. The Sun felt sympathy for Megan, and under the headline, Let's Give Harry's Girl a Chance, the paper urged that the poor girl doesn't stand a chance. She's getting slaughtered from, the ang from all angles before the relationship gets off the ground. Now, nobody realized that Megan and Harry had been seeing each other for a little while now, and that Megan had moved into Harry's home, you know, promptly. I mean, as soon as she was in London, she was making herself comfortable at Notcott. So this business about, you know, she's getting slaughtered before the relationship gets off the ground. Oh, it's firmly established. It's no one's taking Megan down. Megan's going to take Harry down, but nobody's going to, no one's going to uproot her. She's firmly planted. Harry believed that he had good reason to fear the media. You remember, he had always said that his girlfriends had left him because they'd been attacked and provoked. And he f he feared that this was going to rip Megan from him. But, I mean, that just shows how little even he knew her at this time. That he, if he could believe that this media attention, yeah, she hates the fact that it's all negative. But it is media attention. It is getting her name out there. And she believes that she can turn the tide. Jan Moyer, who wrote early on about Megan and Harry's relationship and was quite prophetic about it. She had pity for the poor girl thrown into the tablet's pit. Megan, she suspected, would surely follow Chelsea Davy and Chris Cressida Bonus and flee for the hills to enjoy happy obscurity and avoid a life sentence in a royal court, corroded by an endless appetite for royal news and skirmishes with bloodless courtiers. Prophetically, Moore warned that if the couple did eventually marry, their relationship would, with a hop, and a skip lead to despair and being stripped of all royal titles and dignity. The good news that she noted was that at the Halloween party, Harry showed his maturity by leaving his Nazi uniform at home. So the fact that she even thinks, even, she even thought for a second Meghan would run is a compliment to Meghan. A sane person would have gotten out of there. But Meghan had, had never had any thought in her pretty little head of leaving. Hardly. Unknown to the media and the public, Megan was staying in Nottingham Cottage. So like I said, she's already been there for a while. Um, and both of them every day would just start the day out with their cup of coffee, combing the newspapers and holding each other crying over how mean everybody was being. Megan's over there working herself up into a, into a lather. She's just so mad that any of this is, has been happening and she's just so mad that it's not all glowing because in her mind she had never given any thought to the fact that her family's background would play negatively upon her she's in in her mind she has been such a genius 
to rise from the ashes to, you know, I was just this little girl eating my $4 Sizzler salads and, you know, working my fingers to, a, to the bone at a yogurt shop. And then suddenly here I am with a prince. Why doesn't anybody care about that story? Because that's not really the story that happened. I mean, she may have crawled up the ladder, but through nefarious and questionable means. She just didn't think that anybody would notice those things because she doesn't dwell on those things about her life. She only dwells on how awesome she is to have risen to these heights, to have continually made headway for herself. She thought that was the story, but that's not the story anybody wants. And quite frankly, it's not the true story either. Because yes, she has managed to find herself in the upper echelon, but it was not because she was skillful or talented or had any right to be there. Um, Harry says that he claimed to the BBC, we were hit so hard at the beginning with a lot of missed truths that I, I made the choice not to read anything positive or negative. I'm above such things. I'm elevated of mind and of heart and of spirit and I don't have time for that. Okay. Um, Megan was more candid. After scrutinizing the websites, she felt sick about the narrative, castigating her as a social climber from the ghetto whose goal was to marry up. She says, that was not making sense. I never put any focus on that. So I don't really understand where they're coming with this idea that I was just some kind of social climber, some kind of gold digger. What in my life has ever exhibited those kind of characteristics? <sighs> the gall, the mistruth, the misinformation. Astounding. And this is the state of our journalism. She insisted that she needed protection from the tabloids intent on destroying her reputation. What reputation? Megan ordered her North American publicist to describe her as a bewildered victim of fake news. But no journalist Harry knew would believe that. Fearing that he would lose the girl of his dreams and his future wife, he was distraught. 